I'm McKinney Smith. In 2009, while going through a divorce, I decided to jump straight into entrepreneurship. In 2012, I lost my sister and asked myself, what legacy do I want to leave behind? Since then, I've become a serial entrepreneur, helping other women publish their books, produce their podcasts, and reach their big goals to walk in their greatness. I realized the importance of sharing our stories of resilience and how it can be another's guide to walk in a manner worthy of their calling. We are blessed to be a blessing. So get ready to be blessed with an inspiring testimony. Hey, Faith Walkers, thank you for joining us on the Awaka of My Stilettles podcast, where we have conversations with amazing women that are letting us step into their shoes. I help women to strengthen their resilience muscle, own their stories, and conquer their fears so they can reach their goals. I get inspired when I see another woman succeeding, but what interests me more is her backstory and her mindset on how she got there. So today's guest is about to bless us with her testimony, and since you're already here, you may as well subscribe. Today we have Letitia Roll. She is a model, actress, podcast host of Girl We Got This, and an entrepreneur from Gardner, Massachusetts. Letitia's love for basketball sent her to Eckerd's College on a basketball scholarship where she graduated with a major in communications and a minor in business management and Spanish. After college, she traveled the world modeling and fell in love with exploring different cultures. Currently, she runs her hat company, Tress for Us, and hosts her podcast, Girl We Got This, from Los Angeles, California. Her purpose is to empower women to step into their power and to provide a platform for every woman to share their truth and harness her story. Please welcome to the show, Letitia. Thank you so much, (laughs) Matini. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm totally honored that you agreed to come on and share your story with us and even just reading your bio I'm like I we have so much in common because we're big into like stories and women owning their truth I love it yes yes I mean I feel like that we need more of that so I appreciate (laughs) you for doing this absolutely I agree I agree before I even go into you know our stories and all of that I love to start the show with an icebreaker question because I believe that as women We have all of these different titles that we go by, but a title that's not given enough significance is our names because our names have meaning. And every time Mm. someone says your name, they're declaring that meaning to you and affirming that meaning. So I would love to know, Letitia, do you know what your name means? Yeah, yeah. So my name is Letitia and it is Greek and it means joy. Love it. So in the Greek culture, it's spelled L-E, like Letitia. Um, Mm. But my my mother changed the E to the A and it's Letitia. But that's joy, it. baby. It's all joy I over here. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes, Leticia. So every time someone says your name, they are declaring that you are joy, that you bring joy. Yeah. Amazing. I, I do love too. It. That's so damn <laughs> true. <laughs> so I love to start at the beginning before I get to where you are now. So, you know, I know that you had an athletic childhood growing up. So I would love if you could share, like, what did you want to be when you were a little girl? There was a lot of things I wanted to be when I was a little girl. I mean, I grew up in a small town and I just couldn't wait to get out of it. So when I was a little girl, I actually still have this drawing when I wanted to be a lawyer. Oftentimes I talked back to my parents and that (laughs) resulted in a lot of grounding and math in the mouth. But like, I like to argue. I always had a voice and opinion and I wanted to dress up. I wanted to wear like beautiful dresses and heels Uh, So a lawyer was actually the first thing I wanted to be. But then uh, my dad really created this athletic world around us. And because, you know, my family didn't have a lot of money. I'm from a small town, Gardner, Massachusetts. There was, there's five siblings. Mm. And my parents were very young when they had me. My mom was 17. My dad was 19. So, you know, the way we were going to college was getting scholarships. And the way my dad prefaced that was to get an athletic scholarship. So basketball became my love. I played all sports, soccer. I was a pitcher in softball. I played field hockey, um, all the things, but basketball became my love. And then after that, I just wanted to hoop forever. So 
being a basketball player, the interesting thing, though, was I never wanted to be in the WNBA. I always wanted to travel overseas and play in the league mm. overseas because traveling was something I always admired. And I always wanted to get out of Gardner because I knew there was more to life. There was more to this little small town. And I was, like, very eager and excited to get out and travel and to see the world. I love it. I love I like. I, I love when I hear, you know, women who either come from small towns or, you know, humble beginnings um, and yes. they're able to create, you know, this beautiful, inspiring life for themselves. And, you know, you spoke to the fact that your mom had you at 17. I am very big on empowering our young girls, especially where that's concerned, because I had my first child at 17 as well. So, you know, wow. I go back into those teen mom facilities to uplift them. But I love that's the fact beautiful. that, you, said, you know, you you didn't in, I guess you didn't aspire to be in the WNBA, but it was about travel. What is it yes. about travel that that gets you? Travel is when I felt I feel most free when I travel. To be honest, but as a young child, I would just see these things in these places on television, and I wanted to see them with my own eyes. And there is such truths when you see them with your own eyes because you can't express the feeling mm. of being in that space, in that land, feeling the air, feeling the wind, the the sight, this, the views. It doesn't compare to television. But I remember growing up and watching TV and seeing all these beautiful places. And I'm mixed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have family. My, my dad is Bahamian and Puerto Rican. And he brought us to the Bahamas, all of us. So I met my family there. My Puerto Rican culture, we were with them every New Year's Eve, every other month. Like being exposed to this rich culture was so fun and fascinating. And then my mom is French and Italian. So like I had all of this culture inside of me mm -hmm. and I really wanted to explore it. And for me, traveling, I was going to be able to explore culture. I was going to be able to explore who I really was. And I think that's what really like spearheaded this travel love bug inside of me. I love all of that. Like, I truly believe, you know, what you said, you can't compare it to TV, you know, growing yeah. up, I seen all kinds of things about parts of the world on TV. I even had a fear of ever experiencing Africa because everything we saw on the TV was like, you know, starving children in Africa with flies pitching on them. And it wasn't until after I was 35 that I actually got to go to South Africa and experience the beauty. And you know what I mean? Like, you cannot compare that I know. to TV. Like, Dude, you, in South Africa <laughs> is the best. I lived in Cape Town for four months. Yes, that's where I was. It was amazing. Yeah. It's it was the so best beautiful. Place ever. It's such I a agree. gem. If anybody's listening, whenever it opens back up to us, <laughs> go. <laughs> Yes. You know, when I was there, I thought to myself, imagine if I was limited to, you know, the views that I had on TV right. growing up of Africa. You know, I was there yes. and I thought, wow, you know, on one side, you've got the ocean, the water. And on the other side, you've got these beautiful mountains. But then right in front of you, you had these advanced buildings. Like, it's so beautiful, far beyond it's anything I'd ever seen on TV. Dying. Yes. And the people are so beautiful and kind and sweet. The day life was beautiful. The nightlife was never ending. Like the wineries, everything about South Africa blew my mind. Wow. And you spoke to you being mixed and yes. I'm all of the places that you're mixed with. I've been, and I love like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you, you said your, your dad is Bohemian and Puerto Rican. Yes. Um, Bahamas is probably one of my favorite places in the world. Um, yeah, I, I, well, I got married in Paradise Island, but I also went back there when I decided to finalize my Paradise divorce, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I experienced Puerto Rico and, you know, my stepmother's Italian. Mm. Like I, I love cultures and I love that beautiful mix. I can only imagine like, you know, the experiences that you get to have having, you know, all of those beautiful cultures mixed together. Yeah. I mean, I'm, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to have these cultures infused into my DNA. And I, I thank my parents every day. And I know it wasn't easy for them. You mm -hmm. know, my, I mean, to be honest, my grandfather didn't even approve of my father at the time because he was black mm -hmm. and Puerto Rican. So, like, that was, a, that was a challenge that they faced, you know. And mm -hmm. I was the first one coming out of that. And, like, my grandfather wouldn't even hold me in the beginning, wow. you know, until my grandmother changed the narrative. And my grandfather became my favorite man in the – universe mm -hmm. you know so people can change and culture and people 
and travel. That's life. Mm-hmm. That's the beauty of humanity. Our differences, our traditions, you know, and I'm thankful. I'm thankful for who I am. And I'm thankful that I got to experience every piece of me. I love when you speak to every piece of you in the different cultures, like people who don't travel, like for example, not only have I met people who have not traveled outside of Canada, but I've met people that have not like traveled outside of the city that they live in within Canada, like their area code. And they have no idea what they're missing in terms of those experiences. And, you know, my children, all three of my children are mixed as well, but I've had the blessing to be able to travel all over the world. And you go to different countries and experience different cultures and different beliefs. And it makes you a lot less ignorant about the environments that you live in. Yeah, You know, you're able to see things from different perspectives. Like it's so beautiful. And I, and I love it. Okay. So I want you to tell us what was the intention when you first began, girl, we got this because I know, especially as women, especially You know, when we have multiple businesses going, sometimes our intention when we start a thing isn't or doesn't necessarily turn out the way that we intended it to be. Usually sometimes. Yes. But like, what was the intention when you first began? Girl, we got this. My first clear intention of my heartbeat podcast called Girl, We Got This, it was to give every woman a voice Mm. because I knew what it was like to not have a voice. So. To get into that, we can unravel that a bit. So yes, when I that. started Girl, We Got This, I came out of a relationship. Um, I was in a relationship for five years. And it was not something that I was really proud of at the time. I had all this shame and guilt staying in it for so long and dealing with the things. But it was also beautiful. And there was also great times. Mm-hmm. But when I left, it was very hard for me. And I had to shift a lot inside of me to become one back with my voice to become the woman that I was supposed to be, that I always wanted to be, but I lost myself in a relationship. And many of us women do, Mm -hmm. you know, we become selfless. We put ourselves to the side. You know, we don't step into our power. We honor our men, right? That's what we're, most of us are taught. So Mm -hmm. it makes sense that most of us women do that. And when I moved to LA, I went through a little bit of a depression after the breakup. And I just remember every day I got into my car from Atlanta Drove to LA with one of my homeboys, had the best road trip ever. I recommend everybody doing it once. (laughs) And I remember just being sad and out of it. And but in order for myself to get out of bed, I had to say, I got this. Letitia, you got this. Like you got this. And I would say that mantra all the time. Mm -hmm. And it would get me up and it would get me going and would keep me going. And once I got this, I found my voice again slowly but surely. And at the time, I was with a network called Podcast One. And I remember walking in to talk to Norm Pattis, the owner of Podcast One. He's an incredible man. And I said, hey, Norm, I want to start this podcast. He was like, tell me about it. I said, look, I want to honor women. And I want to give them a safe space where women feel comfortable to own their story, where there's no shame and no guilt, because I was once that girl. Mm-hmm. And that's how Girl We Got started. Wow. Like, I have... I have goosebumps even as you're sharing your story. And this is the beauty of, I don't want to say just my podcast and podcasts in general, because I am quite certain that yours does the same, but it's like you hear someone else's story and there's a part in there that you resonate with, that you connect with, that, you know, Mm -hmm. touches a deeper part of you. You're like, wow, you know, I either experience the same thing or I experience something similar. You know, our stories are so powerful. And yes, you started girl, we got this because of something that you were going through. And all of the women that I've had on the show have that in common where our pain birthed our purpose. You know, we went through this struggle and yes, in our journey of healing, our desire to help others and to serve created something so beautiful. So, you know, when I asked what the intention was when you started, like, I just love to hear that whole journey. It's I mean, obviously, very unfortunate that you had to experience that pain. And I know all too well about, you know, losing yourself in a relationship and the depression yes. that can come, you know, through the, the breakup. So I am just glad that you got to that point where you were even able to affirm to yourself on a regular basis, like you got this. And now yeah, look, look where you. you are. Yeah. And, I, you know, there's power in reframing mm-hmm. because... 
I I appreciate you, you know, being sorry for me, but I'm so thankful for it, McKinney. Like, because mm-hmm. if it wasn't for that, girl, we got this wouldn't have been born. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be able to empower and inspire so many women like I do now. So, like, I am so grateful for that experience because it molded me and shaped me into the woman that I am and still is becoming. Mm-hmm. And it's important for women to hear you speak of how you've been able to reframe that and to reposition yes. that because typically when we go through a breakup and I don't want to say just as women, cause I have some men that I know that are like definitely, you know, hurting deeply from, from breakups, but totally. we, we go through this phase where it's almost like, you know, it's okay. So any form of grief, whether we lose a loved one physically, you know, from this world or like physically from our lives, it's still grief, right? You're going through the grieving yeah. process. So, you you know, you, you process your emotions of sadness and anger and depression and all of those things, but you were able to reframe that and find the blessing in it all. And something that yes. I say to a lot of people when they're going through something is before you automatically jump and say, this is bad. And I've had to do this recently is ask yourself what good can come from this. Because if you wait it out before panicking, because, you know, for me, first response would be anxiety. <laughs> but if yeah, you give yourself that chance, natural. right? Exactly. But then you will see the beauty that can come from it, the lessons that you learn from it, the opportunities that come from it, the growth within yourself that come from it. So you being able to say that I am, I am grateful and you being able to reframe that to a, a place of positivity, like I hope that inspires anyone that's listening. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know what? And also have grace with yourself because nobody taught us how to recover from a heartbreak. Mm. Nobody taught us growing up like, hey, I know you love this man. I know you love this boy. But if it doesn't work out, this is how you may feel. And this is how you should cope with it. These are tools that you should have. I didn't have the tools Mm -hmm. as a young woman. I didn't have the tools as a young adult. I just finally created these tools with the help of therapy and workshops and reading and a lot of self-work. So like to everyone listening, have grace, give grace and be gentle with yourself when you go through this, because it's not an easy process to get through. You know, dealing with your feelings and emotions is something that, again, we were not taught. A lot Mm -hmm. of us weren't taught. And to the ones that are are and were young, that's a gift. And Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for you. But a lot of us weren't. I think it's also very important that you spoke to the therapy piece. And I've been trying to regulate that and make that a normal part of conversation, especially amongst people of color, because there once was, and in some places still is a stigma when it comes to speaking about therapy, you know, especially mental health. I'm going to say in the Caribbean community, where the second you say anything about mental health, you're disregarded, you're crazy, you're all these things. But I believe that therapy should be normalized in, in, our conversations. I believe that nothing has to be wrong with you in order for you to have therapy. It's like, you know, having a tune up for your car, you know, you bring it in for service so that it stays functioning as it should. So I would love to know, like, what are your views about therapy and healing? Therapy changed my life. Um, (laughs) My therapist, it did, she did. Her name is Joanne. Now I got to tell you the story because when I started therapy, I had a different therapist and she wasn't helping and she wasn't changing. She was aiding my pain. She was there for me. So for me, therapy is support. Mm -hmm. I like to think of it as a second mother. I like to think of it as a, a mother that's emotionally intelligent and not even a mother because I don't even put Joanne as a mother figure, but she guides me. As kind of like I wish that my mother had the emotional intelligence to do at a young Mm -hmm. age, that's Mm -hmm. my inner child speaking. So that's literally like, as I said that, like, it's like that inner child in Letitia still yearns for that from her mom. Mm -hmm. But my mother was 17. She didn't have the emotional intelligence, you know, and I have so Mm -hmm. much compassion for my mom. I love that woman madly. But I started in therapy after a a really bad relationship when I first moved to L.A. And my first therapist that I had was cool. She was supportive. She let me talk. She listened to me. And I remember leaving therapy empowered and I was feeling good. And something else happened in my life. And I had this shift where I fell back down. And I remember my good friend, this is why it's very important to have very loving, supportive friends in your life too, Mm -hmm. that can hold you accountable. I have great friends that do that. And my best friend, Cody, she said, Hey, 
I think you should try another therapist. And I said, why do you mean? She goes, because Letitia, you're doing so much work. And I just feel like you're relapsing in a sense. Because I was, I was going back into depression. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was like, what is this? Like, and she was like, just try, just try this new therapist. Like, have a consultation with her and let me know how it goes. And I'll never forget. I had this consultation with this new therapist. And in that moment, I was like, this is it. This is her. So therapy is something that you must do your research on and you must really understand what you want out of it, Mm -hmm. the energy behind it, and like what you're actually getting from it, the support, the education, the tools. So for me, it's all of that. So with my new therapist, girl, let me tell you, (laughs) when I say she changed my life, she changed my life. I was doing therapy with her twice a week in the beginning. Mm. And I had these breakthroughs. I understood myself for the first time. I was able to shed things. I was able to face my insecurities. I was able to speak things that I'm never able to speak to other people because I was scared of their judgment. Mm -hmm. I'm able to just be raw and cry and to feel my emotions. That was that type of girl where I was so hard and hurt from so many people in my life. My heart hardened. But mm. that's not how we're supposed to carry through on life. We're supposed to be heart-minded individuals. We're supposed to be full of love. That's how God created us. Mm-hmm. And because we go through so many things in life, we harden up and we stop feeling our emotions. That's not what life is about. The beauty of life is that we get to fail. Mm. And therapy really allowed me to get to get back to my heart and get back to feeling and to get back to Letitia Roll. I had never knew who I was until just recently and until uncovering and shedding all of these things that I thought I was supposed to be. So when I say therapy changed my life, I don't mean that lightly. I mean that in every way possible. My therapist changed my life and I'm still in therapy once a week. I have goosebumps right now for so many different Mm -hmm. reasons. And Mm -hmm. (laughs) to those people who are avid (laughs) listeners of the show, they know like when the spirit hits me and my goosebumps kick in. I love how you spoke to so many different things. First of all, when you spoke to having to do your research and basically find a therapist that works for you, because a lot of people will assume that when they start therapy that, you know, they have to either work with the one they were referred to or who they recommend or the first person they find. But that is not true because not, not everybody can, can serve you. Not everybody can serve you the way that you need to be served. And it's very important. Like I had a a woman come on previously who had been in an abusive relationship for over 18 years. And she had to interview 12 therapists to find the right one for her because she needed a therapist that understood narcissistic personality disorder, you know, that was in her Mm ex-husband. So if you're going to the wrong person, then they're not going to be able to support you, educate you, provide the tools that you need. You spoke to being able, thanks to therapy, coming to this place of being able to discover who Letitia really is. And I think especially, um, well, let me speak for myself (laughs) because I've been in long-term relationships since the age of 15 where, you know, we spoke earlier about losing yourself in these relationships because we've been taught to, you know, serve and cater to someone else. But you coming to that place now, discovering yourself of who you really are and it's such a beautiful place and it is such a beautiful thing to hear And I want to be able to hear more stories like this because we have gone so long with, I believe you believe the same thing, where we, where our guidance and information is coming from the wrong source, where it's like, you know, there's a lot of women out here that will take a lot of these male thought leaders and teachers for relationship and self-help, take their word as gospel, but they're speaking from the male perspective. They're speaking, you know what I mean? So yeah taking those things and not being able to tap into your own truth of what you actually believe you know from the inside and to be able to come from a place of love instead of taking on someone else's opinion like in my opinion a man cannot tell me how to be a woman <laughs> no no <laughs> they, they, and they never will be able to right they don't know the source they don't right. believe they're right. I'm right? sorry no one will ever be able to tell me ever <laughs> So I just, I just love how you've been able to come to that place. It is so, so beautiful to hear. Thank you. I appreciate that because it's been a journey and people have to understand it's been 32 years of getting here, Mm -hmm. you know, like it takes time 
it takes patience and, and it takes a lot of work and dedication. Like you can't just start therapy and do it once a month and think it's going to work. It's a treatment. Right. You have to be consistent with consistent. it. You have to do the work and you have to honor yourself because this is for nobody else but you. But when you become your best you, you're able to pour into everybody else around you and really become the best for everyone else. Mm -hmm. So it starts with you, but then you outpour and outflow all this love and knowledge and wisdom to everyone else because you're so full. That's what therapy has been for me, honestly. It's a gift. Wow. I, I love it. And that point that you spoke about the consistency of therapy, you know, a lot of people yeah. don't understand or are not aware that like after the age of 25, when it comes to adults, in order for us to learn something, there are only two ways where we actually really learn. One is through consistency and the other is through like a huge emotional bang or shock to the system. And usually it's negative. So, yeah. you know, yeah. everything requires consistency in order for it to stick and to become a habit or automatic. So going to three therapy sessions and assuming, okay, I'm fixed, like that's not it. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. I think of it as practice. Mm -hmm. Like being an athlete, I had to practice. I had to practice. I had to practice to be great. I had to practice every single day to get a scholarship. You got to practice to be great. It's a practice. Mm -hmm. You got to mm -hmm. be patient with yourself along the practice. And everything that you learn about yourself in that process and, you know, what you discover about life and about self, it helps you not only to understand your past and your present, but it also helps you to understand other people. And, you know, you talked about when you're being your best self, how, you know, you're able to, you know, connect with other people and do things better. But like, it's a reflection of who you are. When people totally. talk about, oh, well, I don't have any great friends. Well, are you being a great friend? You know, so if you yeah. are, if you are genuinely from your core, being a good person and working on self you attract more people who are like that because you can connect with them because you know, you're a reflection of that. Yeah. It's mirrors. Every relationship in your life is a mirror mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. It truly is. It truly is. It's powerful that you, you said that the, the mirrors part, because mm -hmm. I know I'm going to take a deep breath as I say this. <laughs> I know yeah. like I said previously, like, you know, I've been in these long-term relationships since I was 15. I, like when I was 15, I entered into a relationship yeah. eight and a half years, five months later, entered another relationship for eight and a half years and so on and so yeah. forth. Right. And then wow. now me dealing with therapy, realizing the toxicity in those relationships. And I'm like, okay, but I work so hard to be a better person, but they are a reflection of where I am vibration wise. Right. Yes. So people may not like to hear it, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. And if, if yes. you want different, then you need to do different. You need to be different. So we can't be, 100%. you know, we can't be looking at ourselves like, oh, I'm perfect. They're the only one that needs to change. Oh, no, honey. <laughs> All your relationships mm -hmm. are a mirror reflection yeah. of you. <laughs> yes, it starts with you. And it's hard for people to swallow that. Like you mm -hmm. said, Makini, it's hard for people to swallow that, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Everything, every choice, every relationship, every love is your choice. You choose mm -hmm. that. Now you yeah. got to ask yourself why. Yeah. Why did I choose that? And then start yeah. the journey. Absolutely. And most of us, unfortunately, chose that because we haven't dealt or healed our childhood traumas. A hundred thousand percent. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So what advice would you give to a woman right now that's healing from, say, a toxic relationship? To be gentle with yourself. To be kind to yourself. And to forgive yourself first and foremost. Mm -hmm. I think forgiveness of self unlocks all this shame, this guilt and humiliation that we feel because of our past self, because mm -hmm. we allowed ourselves to stay in it for so long, because we allowed ourselves to be treated like that, because we allowed ourselves to be talked to or abused. Forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. Once you're able to truly forgive yourself, that's when the true healing starts. Yeah. Forgiveness is good for everyone. It's good for the receiver. Yeah. It's good for the giver. Yes. And once you forgive yourself, you're able to start this journey. You're able mm -hmm. to get deep. You're able to understand why you did what you did, why you chose him, why you stayed, why you, you know, did all these things. You're able to actually unlock your childhood traumas and get mm -hmm. deep and understand mm -hmm. the relationship with you and your father or you in the absence of a father. And your your insecurities, you know the 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 shadow part of yourself that we mm -hmm. often don't like to look at. 
And then after we work on self, then you're able to reframe that relationship and find the lessons and then find the thank yous, find that I needed to get through this to become this woman that I'm becoming now and to forgive him. You can Mm -hmm. forgive him because then at that time you'll have compassion, Mm -hmm. right? Because after you learn about self and dive deep and dig deep, girl, I have so much compassion for myself. Every human being walking on this planet earth, I had so much compassion for, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't until I found and dug deep and discovered myself and my insecurities and my issues and my, my BS, Mm -hmm. you know, I really had to uncover it. And then, you know, compassion for me allowed me to forgive a lot of people that I thought I would have never forgiven. And I'm telling you, that's such a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. That's actually, to me, that's success. It's to have peace. Success is peace. And you can't have peace if you have resentment toward anyone. Right. So that that part is big. Mm-hmm. I think that part is big because there are a lot of people walking around with a lot of resentment. They're not yes. they're not digging deep. They don't have compassion for themselves. So they have resentment to whether it be past family members or friends or relationships. They're holding on to this negative energy that is only harming themselves. Yeah, a hundred percent. Wow. You spoke to like so many pieces just now. I'm like, what, what part do I want to, <laughs> what part do I want to unpack there? There are so many levels to forgiveness. And I think yes. that we can't be in a state where we feel like we can only forgive someone, you know, once they apologize, because that apology may never come. And I had to learn maybe 10 years ago when I was going through my divorce to forgive my ex-husband for a lot of the things that I was unhappy with or how they turned out in that relationship without the apology. The apology came years later, but you know, I never thought I would get it, (laughs) but I had to come to that place of forgiveness so that I could let go of that resentment because it was, it was building negative emotions within me and it was blocking Mm. my blessings. It was prohibiting me from moving forward in life and from my happiness. And I am the only one that has control of that. I was giving power to somebody else. So to anyone who was listening, like you need to let go. There are different levels of forgiveness. Yes. I mean, you know, there's that unconditional forgiveness. That's like, you know, the forgiveness that God gives to us every day or the forgiveness that I give to my children. There's transformational forgiveness where there's like, like I said, there's no apology needed. You know, you give that that right. forgiveness anyway. There's conditional forgiveness where we say like, if they apologize, and then there are many people who are stuck in that zero forgiveness. There's no resolution. They're stuck in their anger and resentment and only hurting themselves. And that's the key. You're only hurting yourself. Mm. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's the key right there. And I want to touch on something that you said when you said that, you know, it was in your body, you know, mm-hmm. you not being able to forgive. And let me tell you guys, emotions that you keep in your body creates disease. Yeah, it absolutely. Crea- it creates illness. There's an incredible book called The Body Keeps the Score. And if you do not release your emotions, if you do not deal with your emotions, if you hold on to resentment, that's not hurting anybody but you. And it's hurting mm. you at a deeper level too, at a deeper level. That is you know, so big that you even mentioned that book, The Body Keeps the Score. There's another book called The Emotion Code um, that talks about, you know, the trapped emotions and how it causes the pain and ailments within our body. But something I even break down to my clients when it comes to mindset coaching, like your thoughts affect your feelings and your feelings affect your body. And when you feel anxiety, that is your body that is in dis-ease. Like the word disease, it, it's really your body in dis-ease, but you cause that because you're out of vibrational alignment. You're not in harmony. So a lot of yes. us are holding on to these trapped emotions and trapped feelings and wondering why we are so sick. And for people, mm-hmm. and I had to learn this late in life, like I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia back in 2006, but I had been suffering from chronic pain for years, not realizing that mm-hmm. it was trapped emotions. And now that I know yes. that, my flare-ups yes. are like 99% less than what they were yes. before because I am now yeah. aware and I am not trapping these emotions and I'm working on my healing daily. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. 
I would love to know, Leticia, how do you stay motivated? I stay motivated because every day I wake up and I get to breathe oh, this air on planet Earth. It's a gift. That's how I stay motivated. Life is a gift. Mm-hmm. Uh, I understand my mortality. I understand that I will die one day. And I understand that if I have the blessing to wake up another day on this planet Earth, today is going to be the day. That's mm-hmm. what motivates me. I think a lot of people are disconnected to mortality. And there's this great, oh, I can't even think of his name. He's one of these great yogi teachers. And this woman asked him, what does it mean to live a blissful life? And he pretty much said, we're all going to die one day. Mm. If you woke up today and all the people that you love woke up around you, that's bliss, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And if you understand that tomorrow you might not be here, how would you spend your day? How would you spend that last day? And I think a lot of people aren't aren't conscious of this. That's my Mm. motivation. Life. Mm get to wake up, to get to have sight, to get to have feeling, to get to have the sense of smell, to get to have the sense to love my heart, Mm -hmm. this cool ass body that can do cool ass things. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's just the appreciation of living. That's what motivates me. The level of gratitude that you have is beautiful to hear. And I- I completely resonate with you. Like I'm, I'm huge on actively practicing gratitude. Like I, I learned from my mentor, Bob Proctor to practice gratitude daily, but to write it down physically. Um, yes. But you know, you listed some of the most simple things that we take for granted and the way that yes. you even said, you know, that you get to have, and you get to have, you are at such a place of appreciation that you realize like none of these things are promised to you. You know, there, there are people who didn't wake up with sight this morning or can't do certain things. So for you to say you get to have, you are showing that there's no sense of entitlement there. Like, you know what I mean? You, you know, mm-hmm. that it, it is a privilege <laughs> you yeah. know, to wake it up is. and have your friends and your family and be able to see yes. and be able to do and, and use your body because there are people who cannot physically do the things that we yes. get to do. And there are people that aren't waking up today. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. But I am, and it feels damn good. Mm. In 2012, my sister passed away when she was 39. And in mm. the six months that I sat in that depression, I had received tons of messages and phone calls and social media notes from people that wanted me to know what she meant to them. And it made me sit and think, what legacy do I want to leave behind? How do I want to be remembered? Yes. And yes. that was when my journey shifted to living in a place of gratitude because she is not here. She didn't get to live out everything that she was supposed to do here on this yes. earth. And every day I wake up grateful, grateful that I open my eyes, grateful that I can see, grateful that I can stand. Like the level of gratitude that I have, because like you said, like there are people who didn't wake up this morning. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. So tell, us, <laughs> tell us what's one thing that most people don't know about Letitia. People don't know that I'm scared of the dark outside. Hmm. So growing up, my father would always say, be safe. My father was very strict. I lived in a strict household. And it was very rare that we got to go out and hang out with friends and be out, you know, at the movies with our friends in our small town. But when we went out, when we went out, he would say, always know who's around you. Always know who's around you. And that still sticks with me as an adult. And in the dark, I can't mm-hmm. see who's around me. And it's a tr- it triggers me. Like, I don't mind. I have to sleep in pitch black dark to go to sleep. But I don't like being in the dark outside. Mm-hmm. And I don't think a lot of people know that. Like, But it's that idea of I can't see who's around me. Mm-hmm. But I think that's one thing a lot of people don't know. I'm not big on being outside in the dark by myself, even with my friends. (laughs) Wow. No, there need to be street lights on. I need street lights. I can relate. I can completely relate. Don't ask me to go camping. I'm scared. It's dark outside. Yes. There better be lights in the camper. We need like 10 lanterns. 10. I feel you. I feel you. Wow. (laughs) Funny. So what other adversities have you had to experience to get to where you are today? 
I dealt with a lot of adversity. I I dealt with dealing with business losses as an entrepreneur. I have a hat company. I make hats for women of color, for people of color with textured hair that can't fit a regular baseball hat on their beautiful texture. Tress, tress mm-hmm. for us, as you mentioned. And you know, I lost so much money building that company. It took me three years to create a hat. Um, just recently, I did a huge collaboration with True Religion just to find out that a company can file bankruptcy and never pay you, but still sell your product as if it was theirs. Oh, wow. And I lost over $25,000. I lost my favorite man on planet Earth, my grandfather. I watched him die. Uh, we took care know. of him in hospice for seven days at my grandmother's house. And watching this 6'3 stature, strong, cool, beautiful man die in front of me shifted my life. I've dealt with heartbreak. I've dealt with depression. I've dealt with the ideals of suicide. I've, there was many times that I thought of not wanting to be here. I've dealt with a lot of adversity, the, a lot. And the cool thing is that I got through it. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like every woman, we all have this resiliency. Resilience is my favorite mm-hmm. word. The mm-hmm. R word, resilience. And I'm telling you, ladies, there's nothing stronger than a woman in mm-hmm. her power. There's nothing stronger than a woman on her journey. There's nothing, there's nothing stronger than a woman that's determined to rise. And, you know, we have that in us. Mm-hmm. All of us, every single woman, men too. I mean, I love y'all men, but this is for the woman right now. <laughs> yeah. We're resilient. We're resilient. Wow. I mean, I'm I'm sorry for your loss, you know, of your grandfather, of the finances, of business yes. stuff. But like you said, you are here. You are resilient. Like, mm-hmm. uh, that. that is what my entire brand is about, resilience. And, yeah. you know, yeah our stories of resilience and how we bend, but we don't break and how we get back up no matter how many times we've been knocked down. And I am grateful for your resilience. My daughter's a tattoo artist. So about two months ago, I let her tattoo on me. Resilience is my superpower. And I was was so, I think I just had this epiphany. Like I am way more freaking resilient than I ever give myself credit for. And I needed that reminder. And I was like, you know what? We should all have that reminder. And I launched this merch on my website about resilience. So, you know, everyone can have resilience as my superpower merch, but it's like, we underestimate our resilience and it's a muscle that we can strengthen. It's the same as someone who goes to the gym and works it out. You know, like every time you get through that adversity, it just shows you how strong you are. And it it sounds unfair, but it's like, how can you appreciate the good if you've never experienced the bad? You know, how can we appreciate the light if we've never seen darkness? And it's about how you duality, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's duality is being able to honor the light and the dark, Mm -hmm. you know, the shadow and the present. That's the beauty of us. And In reflection, when you sit and reflect and you look back at everything you overcome, you should be proud of yourself. You're a human (laughs) being living in this world. We are not gifted with handbooks. We're gifted with parents. We're gifted with guardians. Some of us aren't gifted with either. Mm. You know, and we take this journey. You have to be so proud of yourself. Everyone. Wow. So before we go to the final segment of the show, I want you to tell the people where they can stay connected with you online and get more Letitia awesomeness. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. Beautiful people. You can follow me at my personal account. It's at Letitia. It's L-A-T-I-C-I-A dot roll R-O-L-L-E. That's my personal account. That's me living and doing all the things. You'll see travel. You'll see my inspirational quotes. You'll You'll hear, you know, some of the podcast. And if you want to stick with the beautiful podcast, my heartbeat, my purpose, and really get inspired by other dope women like McKinney's doing as well. It's called Girl, We Got This. It's on every podcast platform. And we have our handle at girlwegotthis.co. So it's girlwegotthis.co on Instagram. And we can talk and hang out and be supported and rise together. So that's where you guys can find me. 
Amen. And to make sure that they can find you easily and connect with you, I will have all of those direct links in the detailed section so they don't have to search too far. Amazing. Thank you so much. No problem. No problem. So the final segment, it's just a quick, pretty much like a rapid fire. I call it a walk in her wisdom. And you basically answer whether it be one word or one sentence. Let's do it. All right. Name a book that has changed or greatly impacted your life. Bell Hooks, All About Love. Mm. The author is Bell Hooks. It's called All About Love. Okay. What is it about? Well, obviously all about love. <laughs> okay. It's it's about love, but it's about like the patriarchal system that we've all grown up in and how, you know, it affects how we love and who we are, whether we're black, whether we're white, the source we're getting this information from on love. Mm. It's usually was written by a white man back in mm-hmm. the day. And it's just very powerful. It's written by this incredible woman, Bell Hook. She's a powerful ass black woman she's an activist and she's just oof she gives me chills she's I'm powerful writing it down because i'm adding that to my reading list thank you <laughs> yes yes <laughs> okay if you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it what would it say and why i would have a big ass billboard that said i love you mm. because everybody deserves love and i love you period I love, I love it. I That's love it. I love, love it. Love. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, okay. Name one of the most worthwhile investments you've ever made. That could be money, time, energy. The most worthwhile investment I ever made was investing in myself. Me. Mm. Going yep. to therapy. Uh, taking care of me. Loving me. Spoiling me. Um, discovering me. Traveling for me. Yeah. Putting the work into me. I, I have it. been my best investment. I love it. Love it. Uh, What new belief, behavior, or habit has improved your life in the last five years? I would say a new habit for me would be journaling and meditation. Uh, Mm. Learning to calm my mind has really helped me. I'm a fiery one. Uh, Growing (laughs) up, I've always been fiery, really reactive and, you know, quick to respond. But with meditation and journaling, I'm able to dial back and have self-talk and Mm -hmm. control my mind. My mind doesn't control me anymore. I I Mm. have control. And it's it's changed my life. Love it. I recently took up meditation as well. Uh, It's been life-changing for me. Yeah. Okay, let's see. What have you become better at saying no to in the last five years? And that could be distractions, invitations, family. Period. It's saying no to things that I don't want to do. It's, I don't people please anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to people please to feel loved, to worry about how I would affect others. Um, I would take responsibility for other people's feelings and I'm not here for that. Mm. And saying no when I don't want to do something, saying no when I can't do something, saying no when my energy and heart doesn't align with it. If it doesn't align with me, the answer is no. And there's so much power in saying no. <laughs> there's and so it's not much easy. power. <laughs> it's not easy. And it's a practice. And it feels uncomfortable at first once you've grown up people pleasing all your life. But once you are able to have that courage and work on yourself, no, period. Mm. And I don't have to explain myself. <laughs> I, I love that's a common theme amongst a lot of the women that have come on the show. Like, you know, it's saying no to what doesn't serve you or what doesn't align or whatever the heck you want to without an explanation. And I love how you're like, yeah, I'm not here for that. Like, that is, I'm going to write that somewhere. That's my new line. Like, I'm not here yeah. for that. That is not what I'm yeah. here for. <laughs> True. I, I recently posted on Instagram because I used to be a people pleaser as well. I'm a, I'm a recovering people pleaser and um yeah going through therapy has taught me and like obviously no requires no explanation but there are still people that would like to ask questions and my new way of saying no is i don't have the capacity like yes you know whether no matter what it is if i want to say no, i don't have the capacity it that just eliminates them asking any follow-up questions yeah look okay. no <laughs> i don't have to say nothing else no. Right? <laughs> I'm not here for that. I don't have to. <laughs> okay, last. Because I honor myself. Oh. Once you yes. honor yourself, yeah. 
it's yeah. easy. It's easier to say no once you honor yourself. I totally agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. Last but not least, what impact do you want to have on the world? I want to allow women to honor themselves, to understand that their story matters, to step into their power, to honor themselves. I want to empower every woman to help them understand that they matter, that they're so damn beautiful, that we're so courageous, that we're so resilient. You know, I think my impact is to really impact women. I, I, I love us. I love us. I think I know we are the best things on this planet. Well, we've mm-hmm. just been oppressed because mm-hmm. of this patriarchal system mm-hmm. for so long. But, you know, people oppress people that they fear. And we women are the most powerful creatures here. We create life. Don't you mm-hmm. ever forget that. Mm-hmm. And if I can help one woman through my story, through my podcast, through my journey, I, my legacy, my my mission is accomplished day to day. So that's what it is for me, is helping women and to allow them to know that they deserve everything they want. They can have it all. And you are so damn beautiful. I love it. Letitia, you are resilient and your story matters. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I so appreciate you. Uh, thank you, Makini. This was awesome. This is so beautiful. I'm proud of you. Um, and I'm thank thankful you. for inviting me on your podcast. <laughs> thank you so much. And to all of you faith walkers out there, until next time, subscribe on all platforms and don't forget to rate the show and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. And you can join the community of faith walkers and sign up for our weekly newsletter at awalkamystilettos.com. And feel free to grab one of my personal development books available online everywhere. And if you can think of one person that would receive value from Letitia's story, please share it with them. Feel free to screenshot this week's episode and you can tag Letitia at Letitia.roll or at girlwegotthis.co and you can tag myself at The Real McKinney Smith and continue to walk in your greatness in a manner worthy of your calling.